Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day it may be for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Layback Gamer, and just uh, please, if you're wearing headphones or have this turned out, or turned up, uh, I'd recommend turning this out. But I knew it! <laughs> I called it! I called it! We were going to oblivion! I called it! Well, this was actually kind of an obvious thing, but I called it, I knew it, I knew I would get this right one of these times. But we got it, we got it, here it comes, Jaws of Oblivion! Oh, I'm so excited, and as a side note, that card back looks amazing. I might have to get it now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get it. Oh, I knew it, I knew this was coming. Okay, so I quickly uh, pulled this up. Uh, currently, I, I was kind of in the middle of homework, and then I got a, a notification on my tablet, and I looked down and went, oh, and I was so excited! I knew it! Yes, I want to see this. Yes. I want to see it. Come on, let us read. First reaction. Oh, we get a trailer. Okay. Um, all right. So let, oh, let's not even uh, look at the one down there. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, let's uh, quickly pop this up. And then we're going to see what it looks like. We got a release date, October the 8th, or at least I think it's the, yes, October the 8th, because that's not August the 10th. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm excited! Okay, alright, we got, oh my god, god, oh, what? <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> Yes, I called it. I called it. Admittedly, though, this isn't quite what I thought. <gasps> There's a new mechanic invade. Oh, God. Oh, my. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Ruthless Daedric forces invade the Elder Scrolls Legends with its newest pack-based expansion, Jaws of Oblivion. Tamriel tears at the seams as conflict wor worsens between the, the Imperials of Cyrodiil and the Daedric worshipping Order of the Mythic Dawn. From the witness from witnessing the rise of Martin Septim to braving Mankar Cameron's eerie paradise, Jaws of Oblivion immerses players in the world. Shaking events of the Oblivion Crisis. Yes, we're actually getting it based on the game this time instead of well, uh, it, it, well, the last ex the Sh Isles of Madness wasn't quite based on the expansion, but I called it. I called it so. Um, just as a bit of a side note, I did have a theory that po was pointing to this eventually happening, and sadly, it didn't quite. Uh, it didn't what. <clears throat> It did not quite pan out the way it was going to be. However, I'm still very excited that we got it. So essentially the theory was because the very first expansion, Fall of the Dark Brotherhood, one of the places that we visited was Skyrim, and we kind of set in motion a few uh, events up in Skyrim. Afterwards, we had an expansion theme in Skyrim, and then we re we start, and then with the Clockwork City, we start in Skyrim and then eventually went to Morrowind. And with that, I said, okay, the next, uh, the next, uh, adventure based expansion, which was, uh, I, well, actually, after we, after return the clock, return to Clockwork City, we then got the Morrowind expansion. And my theory was, is that if we do get a chapter that, fo a adventure based expansion that focused on, uh, that focused, uh, like, say, on an area that we would, had like start off in a certain place, which we ended that one we actually technically started off in Morrowind. Then we made our way to the Shivering Isles, which has its uh the uh, the portal in Cyrodiil. And my theory was the next expansion after that was going to be an Oblivion themed expansion, which ended up uh, not quite turning out. But I could see how they would be able to tie Alliance War because uh Cyrodiil was the Oh, it's technically the neutral territory. It was the one territory that did not affiliate themselves with any of the major alliances. And of course, from there, we went to elsewhere, and else, elsewhere has a pretty big uh, imperial invasion into that. And now we're seeing, as kind of on the flip side of that, 
we are seeing a the Imperials himself get invaded by the forces of Oblivion. So but that, that was the, the the work in theory was after Isles of Madness. This was supposed to happen. Oh my! Something just fell down. I apologize if you had to hear that. Uh, sorry about that. Something just uh completely fell off of uh off the top shelf. Almost hit me in the head there. Um. Anyways, so let's cover the three cards that we got here. We have Blood Craze Daedroth, a three mana strength day. Daedra that had it's three two, draw a card if there is a wounded creature in this lane with summon. That's pretty nice. Uh, in an aggro that I think this would be a pretty decent card in an aggro deck, if you can get it to trigger. It's a bit of a cheaper. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think it's Companion Huntsmate. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's one cheaper. It doesn't get quite gain the stats, but at the at the same time, it's a lot easy. It's easy to wound an enemy creature with just a couple of charges, or it, the enemy could already have a wounded creature there. So, I think it's fairly good. Yeah, I think this would be pretty good in an aggro deck and a control deck. This is definitely a nice cycle card. You can use it to cycle through and draw a card. Um, am I going to be using this in my deck? In my uh. Guild Sworn deck, I will have to find out. We have Forces of Destruction, 10 mana intelligence action, invade, then summon a random Daedra, and summon random Daedra with total 10 costs. So I'm gonna I don't know what the invade mechanic is. It looks like we got it down here. Uh summon otherworldly oblivion gates and build their havoc for oh, oh I, I think I even made I, I, I don't know if I got this on camera, but I think I made a predict like a suggestion for it to have like a, a gate stacking up power like stacking up their power. Now granted in mine it was you play three oblivion gates, they sacrifice themselves and become a great gate and just constantly summon Daedra. Uh this is a bit of a uh kinda sums up exactly what I was thinking, except uh, not with the ten cost, but Anyways, this looks like you're going to want to play this in a deck that has a lot of invade cards. Ooh, I, you can guarantee I'm going to play that. And then Siege Crawler, which the I imagine the premium of that's going to look epic. In uh, Oblivion, we never actually got to see a Siege Crawler attack. All we know is that it popped out of the Great Gates in, uh, in at Kavach and obliterated... Uh, the gates to, into Kavach, and then after that, the they were able to essentially overwhelm and destroy Kavach. And we had to prevent one of these from doing the same to Bruma because if they did it to Bruma, then the Mythic Dawn would have a very clear ground in which to attack Cloud Ruler Temple because Bruma's mil uh, Bruma's military would have made uh, Mankar Cameron's assault on Cloud Ruler Temple, which is where uh, Martin Septim was hiding out at. It would have made it. A lot more difficult and pot and as we saw with the closing of all the gates that they allegedly do and i quote unquote that it made it pretty difficult so with bruma gone they would have been with the siege crawler they would have been able to go attack the small garrison at cloud ruler temple and likely bring the siege crawler to destroy it i mean it might not have been as effective because there it, it is positioned on a hill and I don't know how good this thing is at going up hills. Probably not that great because they had to put a great gate at the top of the hill for Kavach instead of invading from the low grounds. But, yeah. Anyways. It's not going to be anything special. It's a good, it's a pretty good neutral card if you could get, and if you could get this out with a transmogrify, it'd be really amazing. However, one thing that I kind of like about this one is uh, the transform cards. So, like, uh, Unstable Summoning and Barzai's Tinkering, or I'm not quite 100% sure, we don't have a lot of 11-cost cards in the game. So, if you're looking for something really big to essentially just a finishing kill on your opponent, this is a car This is the card that you want to get from one of those Transform effects. Would I recommend running it in a deck? Unless we see some cards that have a lot of dangerous synergy, which it looks... by it's a Daedric theme expansion, so we're going to have some cards based on that. I would say it might not be worth running in a deck, but you never know. I'm definitely going to give it a try. 
Several enhancements to Legends, including a new payment or er, playmat, four new card decks, two new theme decks, new music, and new visual effects. All right, so I ha I was debating not pre-ordering uh, the next expansion. However, since it's this, um, I'm pretty like the last time I said if the stream gets enough if the stream gets enough likes, I would go for it. This one, I'm 99% sure I am just going to go for it. You get the Herald title. No, the no 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 not the Herald. The uh, no no no. You missed a great. Should have just been the Hero of Kavach title because that's what essentially the protagonist of Elder Scrolls Floor uh, for Oblivion was known as. He was known as the Hero of Kavach because he saved Kavach from complete for or at least he saved what was left of Kavach's population, and he was the. And he was the only one at that point that was able to close an Oblivion Gate, which is why he got called that name. He was the, nobody knew how to close these things, how to close this. It was like, a, oh my gosh, this is scary. But he went in there, he closed the gate, and got the title Hero of Kavach. And they're missing it. They, they could have had it as a title here. I really hope it is a title in that you can earn in a, an epic title that you can earn if it's not going to be this herald title because eh. ah, will you close shut the jaws of oblivion or let chaos ramp it run rampant and free choose for yourself when the next expansion hits october the 8th and i knew they were going to have to say some announce one of these expansions this month i thought we were going to get one this month however it kind of concerns me because the next one's supposed to come out in the winter time, which, and it's supposed it's supposed to come out this year. So we're going to be getting it ba like right in December. It's very close, very short time frame. So, yeah, uh, I'm pretty excited about this. And over the next few days, I am going to be well between making uh, some decks, grinding for gold in the arena, as well as maybe streaming the. Uh, streaming some gauntlets. I am going to need to grind a lot of gold because I want to. I really want to like have a, a close to a hundred packs. So I got fifty here, and I'm not going to get right to a hundred. I think I got about two grand right now, but I'm going to try. We're going to try to get as close to a hundred as we can, as I can. And I'm also trying to look up my a, uh, a calendar here. One second. Oh, where's count? There, calendar. Okay, when does this fall upon? Oh, it falls on a Tuesday. Awesome. Okay, so what I can do for Tuesday is, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have, like, I'm gonna get home at about three o'clock on Tuesdays, ish, give or take. Uh, I'm gonna come right down here, gonna start up at the light. We're gonna have a live stream directly on October the eighth. It's going to be about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Depend, it, it kind of depends on like, what time I get home. Uh, it's going to be, it, it's going to launch between 3 and 3:15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll make an official video for that later. I gotta remember to put work off for this day too. So yeah, we got our expansion, Jaws of Oblivion. I gotta make sure I gotta, I'm gonna get a good screenshot. Oh, this is a pretty decent screenshot right? I can take right here. So that's going to do for this li quick little uh, announcement. Very excited. Hope you are. Hope you guys are as well. And until the next video, take it easy.